A ballistic pendulum is a classic physics problem for a couple of reasons. One is that it's an old kind of device that was historically used to measure the muzzle velocities of cannons, which were too fast to measure otherwise. The second is that it's an interesting conservation problem because it involves a couple of different steps. It involves a collision step, which is a totally inelastic collision. Momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not. Followed by the rise step, that part is a conservation of energy problem. So mechanical energy is conserved, though it turns out in that case momentum is not. Momentum is conserved in the first step, in the collision step, because there are no external net forces right there on the pendulum plus block. Once it starts swinging upward, there are external forces in the initial collision step. The work done on the two objects, the bullet and the block, are not equal and opposite because the bullet is moving more than the block is, so we can't conserve energy. In the second part, all the work being done on the block essentially comes from the gravitational potential. So A, what kind of collision is this? That's a totally inelastic collision. The bullet and the block travel together. That's the simplest kind of collision to predict the results. Second part, find the kinetic energy of the bullet and pendulum after the bullet becomes embedded in the pendulum. Third, find the vertical height through which the pendulum rises. If we wanted, we can then find the angle that it swings through. And it's asked to find the fraction of the initial kinetic energy that was lost. So we know right then that it's not going to be an elastic collision. What we've been given is the mass of the bullet is 0.012 kilograms. That's 12 grams. The mass of the block is 6 kilograms. The length of the cord we've set up as 0.7 meters. Turns out that's not going to matter. The initial speed of the bullet was 380 meters per second. What's the kinetic energy after the collision? Well, here in the collision, the momentum is conserved. We're not asked for the momentum, but we'll use the momentum to find the speed and then the speed to find the kinetic energy. So what we've got is the initial momentum of the system is the mass of the bullet times its initial velocity. And then after the collision, momentum is still the same, but that's the total momentum of the bullet plus block. So we can solve for the new speed, just the initial momentum times the mass ratio of the small bullet divided by bullet plus block. Plug the numbers in, 380 meters per second, 12 grams, divided by 6.012 kilograms, gives us 0.76 meters per second. Kinetic energy then, just one half mv squared, here's our v. We could plug that in directly, but I prefer to solve things a little more analytically, see if we can simplify it. That makes our numeric result more reliable for one thing. And also it might give us some insight into what's going on. One half mv squared, so I'm going to plug in our result for v, which is v times m over m plus big M, square that. So what I've done here is you've got a factor of m plus m in the numerator, factor of m plus m squared in the denominator, so that just gives us a factor of m plus m in the denominator. Our m in the numerator, I've split into two pieces, one here and one here, and the reason I did that is that we see it's one half mv squared, that's the initial kinetic energy, times this mass ratio, little m over little m plus big M. So that's kind of interesting. It tells us something we wouldn't see if we just plug the numbers right in. That tells us that after this inelastic collision, the kinetic energy remaining is the initial kinetic energy times the mass ratio. So the bigger the difference between masses of the colliding particles, if the light one is the one that's incoming and then gets embedded in the heavy one or it gets stuck to the heavy one, all the kinetic energy that remains is equal to the ratio of the light mass to the total mass. We can just plug the numbers right in. I've simplified it back a little bit. 0.012 kilograms, 380 meters per second. Square that, divided by the total mass, I get 1.729 joules. What's the maximum height through which the pendulum swings? Here we've got mechanical energy be conserved. The kinetic energy at the bottom plus the potential energy at the bottom is equal to the kinetic energy at the top plus the potential energy at the top. So at the bottom, if we define our axis simply, kinetic energy at the bottom is just one half mv squared, m being the total mass of the block plus bullet. The potential energy gravitational is going to be zero. At the top of the swing, the kinetic energy is zero, and the potential energy just becomes m being the total mass of the system, gh, and it's h that we're trying to solve for. So then we have one half mv squared equals m plus m, gh, solve for h, we get k1 
over m plus m times g. k1 was our mv squared m plus m gh solve for h we get k1 over m plus m times g. k1 was our mv squared over 2m plus m and then we still have a factor of m plus m over g so this whole thing becomes mv over m plus m squared over 2g so I don't really see any insights that we can gain from looking at this formula, however simplified we've made it. Plug the numbers into this first formula, that's the simplest one, because we know what our initial kinetic energy is, 1.729 joules, divided by m plus m, 6.012 kilograms, times g, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and we get 0.2935 meters for the height up which the pendulum has swung. We had to select our length of the cord so that that's not too high, that's not going to go over the height or something like that, and that just works. This is, you know, 0.3 is less than 0.7, so we're good. The last question asked was what's the fraction of kinetic energy lost in the collision? And we'll define that fraction as the initial kinetic energy minus the final kinetic energy divided by the initial kinetic energy. So this is the amount of kinetic energy that was lost divided by the amount that the system had at the beginning, and that's going to be the fraction that was lost. First thing we can do is find out what the initial kinetic energy was. Since so we know the final is already, we've already figured that out. 1 half mv squared, just plug that in, 0.012 kilograms divided by 380 meters per second. Square that, because that's the velocity, divided by 2, gives us 866.4 joules. We can see that quite a bit was lost, because we had a much smaller number, 1.729 joules at the end. So our fraction is initial kinetic energy minus final kinetic energy, divided by initial kinetic energy, which is to say 99.8% of the initial kinetic energy was lost. We can get some more insight by looking at this symbolically. So what I've done is taken our expression for the fraction lost, initial k minus final k, divided by initial k, and I've used the formula that we had for final k as 1 half mv squared times the mass of the bullet divided by the total mass of the system. So here we've got a factor of 1 half mv squared in every term in the numerator and the denominator, so we can just factor that out. So we're left with is 1 minus little m over little m plus big M. We can reduce that further by turning 1 into little m plus big M. So little m plus big M minus little m just becomes big M over little m plus big M. So this tells us that the fraction of kinetic energy lost was the mass of the target divided by the total mass. Since in this case the mass of the target is almost all of the total mass, we're going to lose almost all of the kinetic energy. And plugging the formula in this way, 6 divided by 6.012 gives us exactly the same number as it should. 99.8% of the kinetic energy was lost.